Well, they're smaller than a toonie and rarer than a panda bear. But these tiny butterflies, known as power chic skipperlings, have a big role to play in our prairie grassland ecosystems. Even though they are now considered among the most endangered species on the planet, a zoo in Manitoba has reached a breakthrough that could hold the key to saving them. Joining us with more is research conservation specialist at the Assiniboine Park Zoo, Laura Burns. Good to have you with us on your morning. Hi, thanks for having me. Although new to most of us, the power chic skipperling was once so common, people didn't even bother counting them. And about 20 years ago, that started to change. So what's been happening in the past two decades? Well, about 20 years ago, researchers across the Midwestern U.S. and Canada noticed they weren't seeing as many Powashik skipperling as before. Um, and then in the course of about 10 years, across their whole range through from Michigan all the way up here to Manitoba, we lost almost every single population of them. And the crazy thing is we're not really sure what happened. We have some hypotheses that we're working on, but... In the meantime, my job and our team at the zoo is trying to make sure we don't lose them uh, before we figure out what happened. It is still a mystery you are working to solve, but you know, just some statistics around this is estimated there are fewer than 500 of them left in the wild. What makes them so yeah. important to the prairie grassland ecosystem? Well, Powashik, I always tell people, are sort of like a prairie or a canary in a coal mine. They're an ecosystem indicator that tells us how healthy the prairie is. So butterflies are very sensitive to changes in the environment. And when you lose one or one's population declines like this one, um, you know that something has gone wrong. And that's our first indication that that has happened. So if we can figure out what happened to Powashik, we'll be able to help the prairie overall. Well, while one, well, one team is working on what happened in some of those theories, there are other teams like the Cinnaboyan Park Zoo who've made a major breakthrough that could help save the species. They successfully bred these butterflies on site. Why is this so significant? Well, we, yeah, we successfully bred them this summer and it had never been done before. So we, with a lot of insect species, we unfortunately don't know a lot about them, um, especially when they seem abundant, people aren't super concerned with how they're doing. But when you have a population crash like this, all of a sudden you have researchers around the world who are trying to scramble to figure out what they eat, what they need to breed, um, how long it takes them to develop. So all of those questions we've been working on with our partners. And this summer we managed to figure out how we could breed them uh, in human care. So we bred them at the Assiniboine Park Zoo and our partners in Minnesota um, at the Minnesota Zoo also bred them there for the first time. That must have been a really exciting day. We were just showing our viewers um, you know, pictures of what I think is your team looking for. Uh, the power skipperlings, and then uh, you yeah. holding up the size of them, and they're really tiny. I can't imagine trying to find yeah. them in the grasslands. <laughs> yeah, so they're not too bad to find when they're adults flying around um, because they move, but as a caterpillar, when they hatch, they're only two millimeters long, and they blend in perfectly to the grass. Wow, <laughs> you really yeah. need a trained eye. Um, there's also some high-tech work being done to sequence the butterfly's genome. I mean, your team is really serious about making sure this population <laughs> sticks around and increases. What's the purpose of the genome mapping? Well, yeah, at our lab here at the zoo, one of my coworkers is working on this and it'll really give us a lot of information, not only about how to better preserve this population, so it'll help us make decisions for the breeding program, but it will also tell us how healthy the current wild population is. So she can look at how related individuals are, um, if we think there was an event, you know, 10 to 20 years ago that caused the decline, all of those things um, we may be able to shed light into with the sequencing of the genome. Uh, Laura Burns, great to talk to you. Thank you for this lesson in this butterfly and what your team is doing. Congratulations to all of you there at Assiniboine Park uh, Conservancy. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.